All right, so ladies, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start this up. Uh, I would like to introduce to you a um, alumni from Skyline College, Eric Wang, and um, basically, I think Eric is kind of one of the perfect students for me. I consider him the perfect student, and it's not just kind of what he did in the classroom, but it's all the outside activities that that he did. Again, he kind of um, embraced doing research. He embraced kind of doing trips. Um, several other faculty, then I, I would talk about, hey, I have this student of mine who does this, and they're like, is that Eric? And I'm like, yeah, do you know him too? And he really kind of got to know, and he really got to be a part of the community. And so I'm, um, uh, you know, I, I think that's kind of a really fun thing. Um, when he was at Davis, I was, I would go to some meetings at Davis and I'd be walking around, I'd be seeing him driving around in his car. Um, you know, it's like, Hey Eric, you know, it's, so, so it's kind of a great thing. I'm glad that he's back in town. I think you, you know, you live really close to campus kind of right now and he's working in San Francisco, but, um, it's kind of one of those great things of where a student kind of graduates from not just being in the classroom but being a friend and a colleague in the industry and in the area. So for me, that's kind of a perfect student. And I'd like to see all of you kind of do something like that, kind of connect with a faculty and do something like that. And so with that, what I'll do is I'll leave Eric to kind of, kind of talk about what his journey was. So thank you, Eric. Thank you so much, Dr. Cap. Uh, wow, it's a pleasure to be here, to be able to present back to the community. I'm very excited for this. Um, yeah, so I will start sharing my screen. I did make a little uh, presentation slide for you guys. So let me share that right now. Let's see, present. Oops. Oh, Eric, Younga's on. on. Yep, I, I saw her on the chat room. I was very excited, very happy. Ha have a safe flight, Younga. I hope you, you, you hear what I'm saying, but yeah, I ho hope you have a safe flight back to uh, the Bay Area. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so seminar presentation, my name, hi everybody, my name is Eric, and uh, currently I am a microbiologist in a startup company called Pendulum Therapeutics. And what we do is uh, we produce a symbiotic that caters towards uh, diabetics and we help them control their glucose levels in their blood sugar. And before I was a microbiologist, I was a uh, very, I guess, indecisive student when I first fresh out of uh, high school. And right now, the journey from a undecisive student to my, my current state is pretty long and tedious. And I think it is also extremely fun and exciting going through Skyline College, going through two different colleges as well, including Sacramento State as my first college. And as title page, uh, as you guys can see on the right, my picture, I took a picture of myself uh, in front of building six. That was one of my signature models. You must be the change you wish to see in the world. Uh, that kept me going a lot throughout my uh, experience in uh, UC. Uh, and it also keeps me going right now. I always recite that phrase to a lot of my coworkers and that's what I recite it to myself sometimes just to remind me that I wanna be a change I wanna see in the world. And the picture on the left is me in a high California highway patrol car. Uh, no, I do not work for law enforcement. That was actually just a very cool picture that I found when I was in the Cherry Blossom Festival and I decided to use it because I remember sat in a cop car as a driver's side, so I decided to use that picture and I think that would be a great icebreaker if anybody have any questions. So um, moving along, I guess I could share my experience uh, beginning with uh, my first year of college in um, CSU Sacramento. So I actually, uh, during uh, 2013 and 2014, which is my first year of college, uh, I attended Sacramento State University for, uh, I went in as an undecided major because during that time I was fresh out of high school. Uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do in my life. Uh, I went in as a business undeclared, uh, you know, with a little bit of biology experience before from high school, like high school biotechnology classes that teaches you how to do um, agarose gel electrophoresis and how to look at a cell's nucleus. That's about as much biology experience of that. Uh, Eric, where'd you go to high school at? Oh, I went to Raul Wallenberg Traditional High School. It is a high school based on San Francisco. Yeah, I, I was born and raised in San Francisco, so went to all my schools in San Francisco. But yeah, um, yeah, I went to high school there, and yeah, I, I, from high school to college, yeah, I didn't know what to do in my life, so I switched to, oh, sorry, oh, sorry about that. Uh, I switched four times for my major, so I went from business, undeclared 
to biology. And from biology, I also went back to um, mechanical engineering. And then from mechanical engineering, I decided to do automotive technology. And during 2014, uh, that was when I found out that I have a really cool passion. Uh, I really like to work on cars because uh, I guess my childhood cartoon initial D really played a, lot, a huge role in my passion for cars. So I wanted to transfer back to the Bay Area to also assist my family. At the time, there was some fi uh, financial hardship from my family. So they were wondering if I could move back to the Bay Area to help them out. So that is exactly what I did. I transferred back to the Bay Area to attend the automotive technology course in Skyline College, as well as help out my family. So around 2014-ish to 2017, I attended Skyline College. The reason why I put 2014-ish is because during the fall of 2014, uh, I tried to apply to courses. However, I was unsuccessful because uh, the, I did not meet the deadline for attending the, to apply for courses at Skyline College. So therefore, I actually took a semester off, which is uh, the fall of 2014. So, but however, uh, spring, of, uh, spring of 2015, I was able to attend uh, Skyline College for the Auto 711 class, which basically is the prerequisite for the Automotive Technology Certificate. However, uh, in the fall of 2015, I decided that I really feel passionate about biotechnology because I'll, as I keep thinking about it, cars are more like a hobby for me. So I decided to think about, hey, you know, let's think about the origin of life. Let's think about cells, right? Um, in high school, I did do a lot of um, biotech, like little projects and stuff here and there, but nothing special, nothing complicated, but I thought that was pretty fun. So I decided to do biotechnology. So I switched to the Agetsi transfer route for UC during the fall of 2015. That was, oh wow, that was a great experience because I get to meet a lot of awesome professors. I get to talk to them about, you know, um, different subjects that was, that, I, that was, you know, in the Agetsi transfer list, especially in the courses I need to take, including uh, calculus. Um, I took chemistry, I took biology, I took a lot of these awesome uh, STEM core classes and that is when I encountered Dr. Capps, uh, Bio 215 and 230 classes. They were a science requirement, and I really, really remember that during Bio 215, he was my lecturer. I actually did not need to take the 215 course because in um, Sacramento State, I actually took a uh, equivalent class. So I actually um, dropped that course. However, I really like Capps lecturing, so I, I went back to a 230 course. And yeah, I learned a lot in this tutorial course and that really got me started on understanding biology, understanding how the central dog model works, understanding how the foundation of, you know, of proteins, molecular, you know, molecular interactions. And yeah, those really sparked my interest in biology. And I didn't know that I was that passionate until I took CAPS lab courses. And I think that was really, really fun for me. And I also really love math because I feel like bio and math really go hand in hand and chemistry those three are like the trinity of stem for me i i like physics but i really like math uh bio and chem but yeah and that's when i get to encounter uh, aj bates and young Choi, and they were really wonderful professors that really serve as my mentor as well through throughout my my college years especially with their motivation and you know their tips and guidance i was able to get through my i guess transfer route and yeah, and as of then, I then completed my guess requirements for transfer to the University of California, Davis during the spring of 2017, thanks to these awesome professors that really guided me towards, you know, accomplishing these goals that I had. And yeah, they weren't just professors that will teach you and decide to, you know, it's a job, you know, I teach them, I go home. They were really on it. Like, I would stay after courses, after classes, just to talk to Cap. And I would stay uh, during office hours with Young Choi, doing calculus problems, doing biology problems, like doing a lot of problems. And you know, that, that was a really great, great experience in community college. And some things that I really, really love about community college is um, after I transferred to University of California, Davis, uh, at the end of 2017, oh, sorry, actually, that, that was I will talk about in a bit, but 
what I did in Scotland College as an independent researcher, as an independent student researcher, was studying uh, cancerous uh, mouse macrophage uh, cellular proteins. So what I did, along with uh, one very awesome uh, lab partner of mine, we isolated uh, peritoneal macrophage cells from non-cancerous germ mice. Uh, so they were euthanized ethically with uh, CO2. And then what we did was we performed a uh, peritoneal lavage with uh, phosphate buffer saline, which will remove a lot of the macrophage cells. And then we will lyse those cells and compare them to a cancerous um, mouse cell line uh, by doing a page, which is polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. So it separates protein by, by density. And long story short, it was one of my really, my, my real biology experiment. It was something that I really invested my time, effort, reading primary source papers. And you know, it really educated me on how biology works in the industry as well as academia. So this is really when I got my foot wet and how you know, uh, I learned really cool microbiology techniques such as isolating proteins, um, making a page gel with polyacrylamide, and you know, um, culturing mammalian cells in a six well plate with some DMEM media. It was really great. It was definitely a awesome experience, and I highly recommend any student that find this interesting to definitely start their own biology products uh, projects or definitely talk to CAP about starting their independent student research. I hope that is still ongoing, CAP. It is, it is. Awesome, awesome, yeah. That definitely taught me a lot because although I was not in um, CAP's biology course in spring of 2017, it was uh, a extracurricular activity that I attended. It was a one unit extracurricular activity uh, that I signed up for and I really progressed with this project and it was really that project that solidified my foundation in understanding um, biotechnology, like biotechnology skills, especially culture and mammalian cells. I find that really precious in the field. So yeah, um, after this project, I graduated from Skyline College and I moved on to UC Davis. However, in the summer of 2017, I was fortunate enough to Actually, be Eric, part before, of you, before you go on that one, um, yeah. there's a, a question that's on there. Sure. Uh, um, the, the person wants to uh, know about your thoughts on are there any changes we can make at high school curriculum level to help students better understand what they might want to focus on in college. I too yeah. had a lot of issues with selecting a major that would eventually become my long-term career. I think a lot of students struggle with it and think if we could help tackle at the high school level we can save people lots of time and money. Curious for your thoughts. That's a great question. Uh, amazing question actually. Yeah I definitely believe that there are a lot of things that high schools can do in order for their students to be more selective in what they want to do in the future. Uh, for example, I think extracurricular, extracurricular activities in high school, such as robotics courses, uh, early coding classes, or biology courses, or even automotive courses. I mean, I believe automotive courses are available in certain high schools, but I never get to experience them when I was in high school, which I really wish I did because I really love cars back then. Um, but yeah, I definitely think that extracurricular classes that, you know, like if the students were to select one course out of other courses like math, history, and then, you know, have an extracurricular course, extracurricular course for future development, I think that would definitely be beneficial for students since that will provide a more diverse outlook for them earlier on. So that way they'll allow them to be more affirmative with the choices in when they reach college that's my belief or that's my opinion but yeah that's a great question so, so you did some biotechnology when you were in high school your high school had a had a kind of nascent small biotech program right you, you said you did some stuff yeah um i would say that it's definitely very uh basic but i did that that was actually very beneficial for me and that spiked my curiosity and I think that was actually one of the leading gateways for me to enter the STEM field as a microbiologist or deciding to become a microbiologist. So yeah, I think if there were more courses like that, except if there are different courses such as you know uh, computer science courses or robotics, uh, engineering, mathematics, uh, astrophysics, I think that would be really cool if high schools start uh, having these courses earlier on. That way it provides a, better, a, a wider outlook for, for students. 
So yeah, uh, is there more questions? Okay, I guess I'll continue on. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, um, 2017 Eclipse Expedition, that was one of the most memorable trips or expeditions that I've ever went to in my life. Uh, I will never forget the moment when we get to see the eclipse. Uh, wow, like that corona that when the sun and the moon formed together. Wow, that was that was definitely a sight when everything turned pitch black. But more importantly, I believe in all the universities that I've attended, as well as all the schools that I attended. Yeah, I have field trips. Yes, I have camping trips. However, I believe that when you go on a expedition, like a eclipse expedition, I think that really solidified a lot of things that I believe was a great community college. I think I was able to hang out with a lot of cool people. I was able to conduct science experiments along the way in the trip, as well as, you know, see the eclipse. I thought it was really cool, except that 10 hour car ride to Lake Siskiyou County was really uh, dreadful since we did not have AT in the van, but it was fine. It was pretty fun. But yeah, um, yeah, this, this was one of the most memorable trips that I have in Skyline College community, in, in the community college. It was really fun. And yeah, this is my, our day two. Some of the pictures that we took were as we were traveling to uh, Link Benton and we stayed at the community college at Link Benton uh, uh, as well as uh, speculate the eclipse over there. And there's a picture of me on the bottom and I was swapping flowers to isolate uh, yeast colonies in our forest to make sourdough, if I remember correctly. And we were able to cook the sourdough uh, directly during the next day in the campsite. And I, I think that that was really, really cool because that was using science, applying it into real life. You know, I get to eat my science the next day. That was really cool. <laughs> yeah, that was really fun. That was definitely an experience I'll never forget. So yeah, um, so I think that that, that really, um, yeah, that would conclude my experience in Skyline College. But one thing I do really want to talk about is how I paid for college. So coming to college, I was really, really fortunate that I was able to have financial aid for Skyline College. And however, financial aid was a good portion. Did you get grants or you got loans? Uh, I had grants. I never took out loans for community college. However, uh, because of my financial uh, situation, with family or you know private financial situation, I was forced to. Uh, I, I was in need of more funding, so therefore I did a lot of part time work when I was in Skyline College. So my first year when I was in the automobile program, I worked as a bodyman at one of my friends' uh, body shop. Uh, it was very strenuous. It was definitely a huge learning experience for me. Also one of the, the deal breakers for me to become a mechanic because I realized that it was very strenuous on the body, and. Also, I also learned that time management in community college is extremely, extremely important since there was a time where I prioritized work and my grades would drop pretty hard. Uh, I would work 30 hours a week and I would really not, have, I really don't have time to study. And there was a time when I decided, I was thinking about should I just drop out of school and just focus on work just to make income since my family was so uh, crunched for you know, finances. However, uh, I, you know, I stuck it through and through a, a semester and I learned, I quit the, the body man job and I decided to do something more light. I, did, I was a barista at Quickly's and concurrently I also did a sushi delivery and I was also attending CAPS biology course along with Young Ah Choi's calculus course along with uh, Chang's general chemistry course and yeah that was a huge balance in my life i was trying to juggle a lot of uh time management but yeah i mean it really taught me a lot as well and it was really challenging however i think that these challenges are definitely beneficial they they created a lot of uh use stress situations where i was able to really ask myself internal questions hey you know i'm a college student but that's why i also need to survive i need to pay my rent i need to pay for my car I need to pay for gas. I need, you know, so definitely a great learning experience. Definitely very, a huge challenge. But I think that for any college student that, you know, thought about quitting school and, you know, for supplemental income, like being a barista or being a sushi delivery driver, I think that a lot of it really goes down to mental perseverance. I think that if you're able to, you know, stick it through, suffer that one all-nighter sometimes, maybe even two all-nighters, in the end, it's all worth it. And I think that 
balancing your time, you know, priority, prioritizing what you really need to do. I think that really was a big part of my life during the time when I was in Scout and College. So if anybody have any questions on, you know, um, time management or any questions on part-time work or, you know, part-time work while attending community college or even university, definitely you guys can contact me or contact CAP to contact me. Uh, I will answer any questions if you guys need any um, answers. But yeah. So, uh, well, so what, actually there's a question, on uh, what course, what course or, um, or, or work experience do you think was most beneficial to your career? Mm, that's a great question. Um, and I do have a follow-up question to that question. So um, by beneficial, do you mean as of currently or as of the time when I was a college student? I don't want you to answer both. Okay, so um, I guess a, um, I definitely think calculus was the most beneficial course for me during the time of college because calculus really trained my brain to react fast with math. And I think being a sushi delivery driver, I think that if I can't calculate 10% tip off of the order or 15% tip off the order, you know, then I don't think I, I could be a good sushi delivery driver since, you know, that determines how fast I drive to that person's house. Anyways, uh, okay. But yeah, uh, jokes aside, I think I definitely think calculus was very useful since as a pista, I also need to think about measurements. I, need, I also need to think about uh, receiving money from customers. A lot of it really was very math heavy. So I definitely think that having a strong background in math really helps with any job that you're in in the field. However, right now, since I am a microbiologist in a um, startup, uh, I really think that CAP's independent study was a really, really impactful class for me since um, that really uh, really built my basis as a microbiologist. And I was really able to apply everything I know about microbes uh, from then on to right now, even in the job field. Uh, if you were to enter the biotechnology industry, I definitely believe that you need a strong foundation in understanding how microbes work and have a huge asset or a huge variety of biotechnology skills in order for you to be successful. Great. Mm -hmm. So anything? Nick, there's a question that I think we're missing and um, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, someone back in like two slides back when you were uh, talking about a little bit about your research in college, um, uh, uh, one student is asking the process of cancerous mouse microphage um, cellular protein isolation. Um, did you apply, I think this is the way the, the question goes, did you also apply in interferon process or just macrophage uh, cellular protein isolation? We only did uh, macrophage cellular protein uh, isolation since we didn't really have a lot of time uh, to actually isolate the protein and as well as using interons. So uh, I only have one semester's worth of time before I transferred to Davis. Uh, I actually want to do a Western blot, however, I believe uh, during that time, uh, it was hard since uh, there was a lot of funding issue and there was a lot of hardcore issues with getting the right dilutions of the protein or for us to get a uh, very uh, great resolution on the band, protein band. So yeah, it was very limiting, but it did, however, taught me a lot of things about biotechnology as a, you know, uh, oncoming, onboarding microbiologist. Any more questions? Yeah, one more. Yeah. Is your startup um, hiring a cleanup uh, microtube? Sorry, hiring. So, oh, sorry, is your startup hire a, a cleanup microtube? Oh, I'm not sure if you have a cleanup microtube. I guess in your startup, like a like a cleanup crew, or yeah, so. So somebody helps wash the glassware and kind of stuff oh. like that. Entry level position, I guess. Oh, okay. I yeah. Think, uh, so yeah, um, yeah. At the previous, so I guess yes, and also no, because it's kind of uh, ambiguous right now due to the COVID situation. However, in my previous uh, employment at Symergen, which is a biotech company based off of Emeryville, uh, we do have uh, lab technicians, they're, they're called lab technicians, that do uh, lab glassware. They wash uh, glassware and they also do, um, uh, how would you call it? They would, oh yeah, they would strip down the, the bio fermenters that we use. They would remove the uh, disposable tubings that we use for, uh, that we use to pump in 
phase to keep you know, uh, you know uh, the reactors within pH when we are running an experiment. And yeah, they're called lab technicians. And I know that there's a lot of companies that are hiring for lab technicians right now. Uh, and if any of you are interested, definitely let me know. Uh, I also have uh, a lot of connections on LinkedIn that I can you know, provide you guys with. Uh, there are a lot of recruiters. So a lot of them will be contracted positions, but if you guys need any um, uh, pointers, definitely let me know. Uh, at the end of the slide, I will have my contact information. So feel free to take pictures, take screenshots, and email me and contact me. And yeah, we could go further from there. So uh, you use link, uh, do you think it's better to use LinkedIn or like Indeed to do a uh, job search? I think using both is very helpful because uh, my current employment, I actually found it through Indeed. However, my previous uh, employment, I found it through LinkedIn because a uh, LinkedIn recruiter reached out to me. And because of, of, um, because of that, I was able to secure my first job as a contracted uh, research associate at Zymogen. However, due to COVID, uh, I was laid off. But yeah, so Indeed was able to, uh, going through Indeed, I was able to find my current employment. So yeah, it's, I think both job platforms are very helpful. So I definitely think that utilizing both to your advantage is more beneficial than utilizing just one of them. How long, I'm sorry if you, if, if you, I mean, how, how long were you unemployed? I mean, is, is this, this, it tends to be, I think nowadays that people, you know, you have a network and you get unemployed, but it's usually you get another position relatively soon. Right. So, so is that your case? Is that what you experienced? Uh, actually, for my experience, I was laid off in May of 2020. So I was laid off in May. Uh, I was hired in August 10th of this year. So it was like a roughly three month period where I was unemployed. So I actually uh, mass applied to job after I got laid off because I was um, worried that I would not be able to get another job due to the current situation of COVID. However, uh, I think in the biotechnology industry, uh, there will always be a lot of uh, jobs available. However, the longevity of the jobs or job stability is kind of, the, kind of uh, it varies per company. So I think that what's important is actually having that uh, mentality of not blaming yourself for getting laid off and not, you know, putting on yourself is very, like putting the fault on yourself is very important because um, a lot of my colleagues were also laid off from Cybergen and some of them took it very personally and that caused them to stay uh, unemployed. And they, uh, I think that was extremely um, unfortunate because some of them were really great colleagues. And uh, so, yeah, I think definitely right now, um, have an open mind and keep searching if you are searching for jobs. So somebody asked, uh, what year you graduated from Wallenberg? They think they may have been on a tennis team with you. Tennis team. I graduated at Wallenberg uh, 2013. I was in the badminton team. I was the captain. So if you happen to know me, hi. James Charles at the Rossi Tennis, tennis Court. Okay. James Charles. Uh, I know James Kwong. I don't know about Charles. But, yeah, nice to meet you. <laughs> but, yeah. And then um, there was, a, how do you manage all the stress along the way to achieve your current goal? And I think Davis was pretty stressful to a lot of people. How do, how do you manage all that stress? Oh, yeah. Um, I actually did not manage my stress really well. Uh, I, was, I was diagnosed with a mid, mid, moderate to severe depression during my last year of uh, Skyline College, actually, because I didn't know what to do. I really like Skyline. And transferring to a university seems very stressful. Uh, However, I think what I could have done better in order for me to manage my stress was definitely uh, have some time for myself. So a lot of times, basically seven days a week, I would be constantly, if I'm not in school, I'll be working. Uh, and if I have one day to myself, I would spend it with my friends. However, spending time with your friends sometimes is not really time for yourself. Uh, some of my current hobbies right now is fishing and cooking and playing games, but uh, a lot of it, when I do it by myself, I think it, it really does, you know, really release a lot of tension from my mind. And I do get tension headaches now and then, but I think when I go fishing by myself or if I go fishing with just maybe my twin brother or my girlfriend, I think it really uh, alleviates a lot of the stress. So, sorry, it alleviates a lot of the stress. So I think 
it helps a lot if you have one day to yourself or have some time to yourself that you set set apart from auto work and auto school just for yourself. And I think that will be a better stress management. And yeah, I definitely do not depend on substance because I think that's what I did as well. And it it took a toll on my health. And I think that would be a great lesson to, I guess, explain. Uh, at the time, I was uh, smoking a lot, and I think that was extremely unhealthy. I think that was definitely not a great way to cope with stress. And yeah, I definitely think that a lot of times it's a, it's very easy for you for a person to really depend to be dependent on a substance, and it's very hard for you to get rid of that substance once you're dependent on it. So I think that definitely do not start. And do not use that as you know a gateway for stress release because it, in the long run it will be extreme. It it really affect it really impacted my well being. So I definitely think that in the long run it's not beneficial. So yeah, that will be some things to avoid and some things I guess you guys could uh, work on as having your own uh, leisure time. So I was on this slide, I believe. Okay, so next slide. Okay, so, so during your three months of being unemployed, how often did you apply to jobs? And how uh, long did you wait before getting a response from employers? So the trick is to actually not mass apply on one day. The trick, in my opinion, is to apply to two to three, three jobs every two to three days. So I would say like on one day, on the Monday, I will apply to two jobs and then I'll play a lot of video games just to get my mind off of it. On day two, I will, apply to three jobs and I'll, you know, okay, then relax. And then Wednesday, okay, I don't feel like applying. I will just relax. And then Thursday, I'll, okay, I didn't apply yesterday. I need to apply to a couple more jobs, like two jobs. And then, yeah, basically, as you keep doing that, as long as you have your resume updated, tailored and cover letter tailored and updated, I think that it is very easy for you to, uh, uh, I guess, fill in the blank for each company and then sub submitting it for each company. So I definitely think that slowly mass applying is way more beneficial than mass applying on one day since it really does it's really exhausting uh, exhausting because uh when i first graduated from invest i mass applied on one exam I, I think i applied to like 50 or 40 positions that are on like different platforms i think i applied to like 20 on indeed 10 on like linkedin uh glassdoor has some so i try to contact as much as i can and that really took a toll on me because like uh i keeps swapping company names on my um, cover letters. So I know for sure I will not get contacted by those companies since I'm calling Twisted Bioscience Genentech. Oh, snap, you know, oh, uh oh, that's over, you know. That's the, that application will be discarded most likely. But yeah, um, so I think the trick is definitely pace yourself. Uh, pace yourself with applying to companies. And if you guys also need any um, uh, resources on how to tailor your resume or how to tailor a cover letter, you guys can also reach out to me. I am also available for uh, any questions. I could actually share my uh, my resume and my cover letter to Dr. Cap, and he can share with you guys as well if you guys need any pointers. So yeah, that that was my journey to applying mass applying to companies. So how would they would they respond? Did everyone respond to you, or how how a lot of times would they respond? Out of fifty companies, I would say probably two three will reply uh, for my first job. And for my second job, I think because I have more experience, uh, I think I applied to around 30 companies and I think like 15 of them replied. So I think it was pretty good despite the odds. I think it was really great. Uh, yeah, I got a lot of interviews. They were really stressful because a lot of them were panel interviews, but yeah, I think it's worth it. Can you describe what's a panel interview? What do they do? A panel interview is when you are in an interview process with, um, I would say six or six through eight people. and uh, you would interview with uh, two per two people per session. It would be two people per thirty minute sessions, or depending on each company, it might be a little bit. It might vary, but for my company, I had a uh, two people per thirty minute session for four and a half hour, four four hours roughly. And basically, during that four hours, every thirty minutes, there'll be two new people, uh, two new uh, workers from that company, or yeah, two new interviewers, and they will interview me. And they will ask me a lot of uh, questions. Some are technical, uh, some are more personal, and some are more um, catered towards like, oh, okay, are you able to work night shift? Are you able to work this shift? Yes. A lot of. You get to go to the bathroom? 
Yeah, oh, I have like, like sometimes I have a five minute window between those uh, 30 minute sections. So yeah, that's when I would quickly grab a snack, drink some coffee, refill on my energy drink, and then, you know, continue to push on. But yeah, it was, um, it was rough, but it was definitely really uh, rewarding because uh, it wasn't as bad as it seems actually. Uh, after the first two uh, people that interviewed me, I got really comfortable with it. So it definitely is something that you'll slowly ease into. So I think it gets a lot easier as you progress through a panel interview. Good that you see it that way. It seems intense to me. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I thought it would be intense at first, but it was definitely more uh, relaxed, I would say, after the first yeah. two. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing. That's a very good perception of it. Yeah, no worries. Um, yeah. And again, I really appreciate all these questions. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, definitely feel free to uh, interrupt me and let me know. But yeah, um, moving forward to my journey in uh, UC Davis. So I was accepted to University of California Davis in the College of Agricultural and Environmental Science. And my major was in biotechnology with an emphasis in fermentation and microbiology. So again, my transition from semester to quarter was really, really hard because I had to rebalance my life with time. And I think uh, what really helped me with time management again is definitely establishing some alone time and, you know, definitely have your own leisure time in order for you to de-stress, you know, take things slow for that one day and then, you know, get back into the grind afterward. And in, you know, in UC Davis, I had, uh, I attended two super awesome internships. Uh, one of them is called uh, HES Lab and the other one is the Carbohydrate Observatory Project, also known as the ZimWiki Lab. So, for uh, UC Davis HES Lab, uh, this was actually one of the most hands-on uh, microbi microbiology uh, like related internship that I had. So the goal in this uh, internship that I had in Davis was to create a synthetic uh, microbiome uh, model for monogastric animals. As, as we all know, you know um, the, the myth that a cow has four stomachs is, is not correct. They have a ruminant, uh, organ, which is four chambers, and it conducts fermentation that degrades uh, structural uh, structural carbohydrates of plants. So for us, we're human. We do not we do not have the capacity for us to um, uh, metabolize cellular or uh, plant basically plant material compared to uh, ca uh, cows. So in order for us to study the microbiome, which is basically the uh, the gut flora of uh, humans. We try to study, we try to start with something small. So there's something called the altered Schadler flora, which is basically a modeled microbiome that was derived from mice. And, but there's too much variability between mice and humans since mice is like that tiny. And like, we have a lot more uh, uh, organs and a lot more functions in, in comparison to a mice. So we try to uh, create a synthetic pig microbiome model. And with that, was extremely hard because we were trying to start with uh, the alter, well, let's shorten the alter shaler floor as ASF. So we tried to start with ASF uh, by modifying it in order for us to be able to inoculate a pig. But um, it was very hard to culture these microbial uh, species because a lot of them were strictly anaerobes, a lot of them were clostridial species, some of them were eubacterium species and a lot of them have a lot of uh, metabolic limitations. Like uh, they have a lot of limiting, uh, how would you say, metabolites there, yeah. They have, they have a lot of limiting metabolites and to make a complex media that will adhere to all these microbes were extremely hard. But I think in this internship, I really solidified myself as a microbiologist because I really went through the phase of uh, operating in a anaerobic chamber which is a chamber that you use to culture uh, or do work on uh, strict anaerobes. It, it is basically a box that has a feed-in of a mixed gas, usually 5% hydrogen, and the rest will be carbon dioxide and nitrogen. And yeah, that keeps basically that box anaerobic. So there's no oxygen in it for enough for you to, so that way it won't limit uh, anaerobes for metabolizing what they need to metabolize. And yeah, and I was able to, uh, have the experience of putting my hand into a fistulated cow, which is basically a cow that's cannulated, as you can see in the picture. Uh, there is a cannula that is uh, 
install, I, I can't say install, I don't know what the correct word is, but it's basically surgically applied into the side of them, uh, which is located, is connected to the rumen. So if you open the, the, the septum, there you could reach directly into their rumen, which is uh, the, chamber, the, the chambered organ that they ferment uh, plant matter in. And we also try to do fungi, anaerobic fungi isolation uh, with those ruminant solids that we collected from the cow. But again, it is also very hard because these organisms are very, very meticulous in what they want to metabolize. And especially the environment that they'd like to reside in, it's very hard for us to replicate it uh, in vivo versus in vitro. So in vitro is definitely a lot, sorry, in vitro rather than in vivo. It's harder to reproduce the, the results in a test tube. So yeah, it's definitely a challenge, but I definitely think it was very rewarding. I learned a lot about the gut microflora and I learned a lot about uh, anaerobic uh, microorganisms. And I think that taught me a lot. And I was able to apply out the, out the knowledge that I gained from this internship into the job that I have now. since I'm currently working on microbes that, you know, uh, that caters towards uh, diabetics. And I think it was very, it was very uh, rewarding. And yeah, that was my experience in UC Davis Hess Lab. For my next internship, this internship actually paid me uh, $12 an hour and this paid for my rent at Sacramento, when I lived in Sacramento. So it was a great internship and what I did was I extracted non-structural carbohydrates from nut trees and I created a gradual graph that shows the changes in the sugar levels in, you know, throughout each season. So uh, depending on the season, some trees like to store their carbohydrates differently. And depending on the conditions that they're in, uh, sometimes some would yield better almonds or some would yield better pistachios. So we collaborated with like 40 different farms. So we could go to their farms and uh, take uh, newly grown branches from these trees and we will extract the non-structural carbohydrates from them and then we'll create data, uh, data points. So on the picture, that is the level of carbohydrates and uh, each data point is basically different, uh, different trees and different samples. So as you can see, it shows a gradual change during the season of how high the carbohydrates level are throughout the season. So I think that was really informative. And yeah, it was, it taught me how to um, handle very, scary reagents such as sulfuric acid and uh, acid and anthrum. So yeah, but at that time I was also taking 16 to 18 units per quarter. It was really intense. Uh, it was definitely more intense than the time when I worked two jobs and attending community college. So I think if you guys have any questions regarding time management on uh, how to get an internship as well as taking courses well, that's the next question. What's the most efficient way to find a great internships and uh, volunteer okay. for a biology yeah. major at a UC? Perfect. So uh, in each UC, uh, they always have an internal site uh, for UC Davis. It was called uh, Handshake right now, I believe. That's the most updated name for the site. And in Handshake, they actually provide you a list of uh, postings that each lab or you know um, each project is uh, look like the internships that they're posting and that those are the availabilities. So what I did was I actually went through the, etern the internal uh, website called Handshake and I applied for all the, the positions that I wanted and I got replied for two of them, I believe. And then I, I uh, went through an interview. Yes, you also, you still have to interview for internships that are non-paid, uh, which is uh, HES Lab. For HES Lab, I actually went through the interview uh, non, uh, it was like a two hour interview with the PI as well as the lab manager. And yeah, I got the position because uh, my major was in fermentation and I really wanted to learn about how the fermentation you know, works in a ruminant animal as well as a monogastric animal. So they saw the passion, so they decided to hire me as an intern. So I interned at HESLAB for one and a half years. Uh, it was, I started my internship uh, midway, I, I started my internship the beginning of 2018 up to the time when I graduated. So I was in this internship for one and a half years. And concurrently, I also uh, was hired by Zimwiki Lab at the same time. So one was paid and one was not paid. So I decided to take both of them. 
since both of them would since both of them are in different fields and i thought that i would be able to learn a lot from two different fields and two different aspects of uh, biology and one is paid so i definitely need the money for rent but wow time management was intense it was really hard uh yeah uh so what was a day like then for you so uh, you're going to school and you're you got some me time and what what, what did you do there, there was no me time in uh, uc davis uh in the yeah it, it was hard so on some days i would let's just say on a typical monday uh or monday to friday i would go to class from like eight to or nine or nine o'clock to ten twenty sometimes even earlier sometimes there i remember there was a physics course that i took uh that i have to be in class by like seven and then after right after class i had to bike to the internship building to uh i believe did some i did some paperwork like reading uh publications and you know getting primary sources understanding primary sources and that took like three hours afterward after attending class again and sometimes I would try to stop by uh, the MU in UC Davis to grab a bike, which is basically the Memorial Union. It's basically like the building six of Skyline, except a little bigger and has a lot of food. So I would stop by there, grab a bike, uh, and quickly go to class. After class, I would go to my intern, my other internship, the paid internship, and I would do my uh, my uh, colorimetric assays to get paid. Uh, so I would crush plant material into powder, and then I would extract the, uh, the, the, the non-structural carbohydrate, which is basically glucose. I'll extract it with um, uh, a pretty long process that took like two days. So I'll start the process and then there is usually a waiting period where we incubate the samples in the uh, hot water bath. And then during that time, I will go to class again or I would try to uh, do some of my homework. And then, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of juggling. There's a lot of juggling between internship, uh, school, and then when you're done with everything, then you go home and yeah next day you rinse and repeat so for the yeah i, I would say for the, a good year and a half I, my life was completely consumed by internships and school but i think it was worth it i think I, it was i learned a lot in these internships so i definitely think that's very rewarding even though they're very intense so i would suggest taking one internship at a time don't take them to don't take two internships concurrently along with classes Definitely pace yourself. Don't don't be like me. It, it was a huge challenge that I was not ready for, but I did it. I jumped the gun, and I mean, it, it worked out in the end. But it was definitely extremely challenging. So yeah, one internship at a time is uh, definitely enough. Uh, there's another question on the fistulated cows. Those always yeah. tend to be really. Um, so how many of them are at uh, UC Davis, and um, do you think it's beneficial to study from them? So I think currently. Uh, one passed away due to a, a infection, I believe. Uh, I think that, uh, however, during my time at UC Davis, I believe there were three cow, uh, three fistulated cows. Uh, the one that we worked on were rare, they're extremely healthy. Uh, we we make sure that they get fed well, or you know, based on different experiments, it depends on what their feed is. But generally, I think that it is rewarding for us to work on fistulated cows because a lot of times uh cattle is one of the uh you know more prominent industrial meats that we produce and they create they create a lot of methane uh one of my uh, one of the main goals of uh Hess lab was actually to lower methane production in uh, ruminant animals by seeing what type of supplemental feed uh, we can give them uh, to see if we can reduce it so uh we did discover that seaweed was a one one species of seaweed that when we supplement it into their diet, it reduces a lot of methane production. So I think by doing that, we're able to reduce carbon footprint. So I think that the costs and benefits of a couple of cows getting cannulated uh, versus you know publishing a study that a lot of scientists can use, you know, and you know uh, things that we can apply into the industry is definitely very worth it, in my opinion. But that, um, actually, yeah, that's good. Do, do you have did you belong to any clubs that would help you exchange and give feedback on your homework for UCD related lab courses, et cetera? Yeah, yeah. so um, that was a great question. I was actually in the biotechnology club in uh, UT Davis. However, um, I was more involved in creating like study groups. Uh, I think a lot of classes, study groups are very, very common. Uh, so what, they, what we do is uh, we group into like a group of 
two to three students, sometimes five, six students, and we will study outside of class together when we have time, basically. Uh, sometimes we'll go to each other's dorms or uh, apartments that have study rooms, and then we'll just study all together. And I think that's very beneficial, actually, because having a second opinion in uh, coursework really opens up your mind. Like, it helps me a lot in, on exams, and it help, uh, uh, basically we're helping each other, right? Like, one more brain is better than one brain. So, yeah, I think that was very rewarding. So there, are there any programs, clubs at UC Davis that you would recommend as a great resource for trans, transferring biology majors? Mm, I definitely think for biology majors, there are many clubs actually in UC Davis. Wow. They have biotech club, they have bi regular bi biosci club, which is basically uh, biological science. So it's interesting. In Davis, uh, biotechnology actually belongs to, like the topic of biology, biotechnology belongs to the College of Ag, which basically means agriculture and environmental science, while biology or biological sciences has their own uh, college. It's called CBS or College of Biological Sciences. So depending on which uh, field you decide to go into in Davis, you could actually go to the college and ask for resources. Uh, they will actually cater uh, in like specific resources towards you to make sure that uh, they meet your needs. So yeah, I think it is very helpful. So there's also a student center for all academic and personal help. And yeah, if you guys ever need any, uh, you know, if you have any questions regarding tuition or how to apply to grad school or you know, any academic or personal uh, questions, you guys could definitely go to the student center in UC Davis if you guys are planning to attend, to, to attend Davis. Which I highly recommend as well. There's a, on your internships, did you work alone or did you work alongside others? Uh, on my project, I do have, uh, I have a, a guidance uh, graduate student. So basically uh, I work under them. So I will be working on their project. So they would teach me a lot about uh, like uh, primary things that I need to understand. And then I would go ahead and do the work. Uh, as I also have a lot of um, like, um, I would say, concurrent interns that work together. So yeah, we would do, we, you're basically never alone in a lab because uh, one, that's actually a safety issue since if, one, if you happen to spill acid on yourself or if you happen to have a uh, chloroform in the freezer or um, beta or capital ethanol and you use, you're using that to isolate RNA, you actually spill like a gallon of that or a huge amount of that, that is considered a safety issue. So you definitely can't be alone in a lab for safety reasons. So yeah, you're definitely, you're always working with somebody. Those are all great questions. I, I really love answering these questions. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to uh, ask me at any time. Can I ask a question? Yeah, of course. Okay, I know that UC Davis, they have, uh, they have um, biology science college and they have also, uh, um, like biotechnology is different college, is that correct? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that's correct. Okay, how if like how you if you can transfer from uh, molecular uh, microbiology to biotechnology, or I can have like minor major in biotechnology and my, my major is uh, microbiology. Uh, yeah. So how can yeah. I know how like. I am interested to get bachelor degree in molecular microbiology, but also I am interested since everything now is based on technology. I want to have minor degree in biotechnology. Is that possible or no? Uh, that question, I think I will not be able to answer completely because uh, I think you will need to ask a uh, counselor on that. Uh, however, what I do believe is that you can, you definitely can have a minor in a different college uh, okay. as long as some of as long as you, you have the prerequisites uh, uh, done. So I definitely think that it's very possible for you to get a minor in uh, College of Ag, which is biotechnology, and having your primary major as a uh, uh, molecular, molecular biology from, the, from C College of CBS. So I think, yeah, basically the, my, my opinionated answer is yes, but truthfully, I think you should definitely check with a counselor. Yeah. And how about the changing major? Is that like uh, possible at UC Davis or no? Once I transfer, I should stop in that major. Uh, you you could change your major. However, it is a little bit uh, harder to. Um, 
like if they do not allow me to get my biotechnology and they change from uh, molecular microbiology to biotechnology? Uh, I, you, yes, I think you can change majors because uh, a lot of my friends, they actually did change the major once they are transferred. Going, so I have a friend that actually transferred into uh, uh, Davis as a uh, biotechnology major and then he actually switched to chemistry afterward. And that's actually in a completely different department. So yes, uh, that answers a hard yes. You could definitely change your major after you transfer. And another question, when you do research, uh, do you have that topic by yourself or your professor like give you a topic and you have to do research on what they want? Uh, so it really depends. So for my internship, uh, there was already like a, pi a primary focus on fermentation and in uh, reducing methane production of cattle or ruminant, uh, ruminant species, right? However, uh, I was interested in developing a synthetic microbiome model, which actually it does go hand to hand with the topic that they're studying. So therefore they actually assigned a graduate student to that topic. And yeah, that became another project in the intern, uh, in, the, in, the, um, in the laboratory. So yeah, you, you could definitely start your own project. However, mm -hmm. majority of the time, I would say that uh, you will be assigned a project and you, they would uh, tell you to look for primary sources and do the research uh, as well. Okay. okay. Good. Yeah. At least Good question. Yeah. Okay. Um, any more questions? Eric, we are a few minutes away from the end of the session, yeah. but you are free to stay and um, you know keep talking as long as as you want. Okay. I just wanted to let you know. Okay. Yeah. This is actually my last one of my last. Oh, it's basically my last slide. It's just talking about my present time uh, as a biotechnologists in the field, but I think I've spoken about it. But yeah, uh, again, I want to say thank you all so much for attending this uh, seminar. You know, it's, it was really great speaking with all of you guys. And yeah, you know, uh, if you guys have any questions, here is my contact, here is my email, my LinkedIn. If anybody has, you know, any concerns about the job, the industry, any questions, uh, any concerns, or if you guys need any uh, resources in applying for uh, Entry level positions or internships, feel free to reach out to me. I am always here to help out with anybody. And if you guys uh, are struggling to reach out to me, definitely reach out to Cap and have him reach out to me. I will try my best to help out all of you guys as much as I can. Thank you so much, Eric. It's so nice to to have you and, oh. and you know giving all that uh, precious information and, and advice to to the students. It's great.